Given the recent developments in the conflict in Ukraine, the latest measures adopted by NATO countries and the setbacks and talks between Kiev and Moscow, some questions arise, yet they are not addressed by the political elite, not their watchdog emissaries. Here to offer some insight into this issue is political analyst. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I would like to begin asking you several questions. So the first one is, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine has been marked by intermittence in negotiations. There was a time when both parties hinted some progress made in talks, but then Ukraine pulled back on claims of serious violations, for example, regarding the Bucha events that still lock an impartial and thorough investigation. What with this magnitude and severity, who could possibly gain anything from prolonging a conflict like this? Thank you so much for having me again. Uh, Ukraine, since the beginning of this conflict, like uh, since the Maidan, like in Ukraine, have never been serious on this issue. Russia shared its uh, huge security concern regarding the genocide of the its uh, Russian-speaking population in the Logans and Donetsk Republic. So it was a big issue. Russian president has been highlighting, and Russian security circle has been to have been talking about this issue. But Ukraine was not serious until led to the big conflict, like a bigger scenario we have seen, like. The Russia attacked, uh, like, uh, went for a special military operation in Ukraine in order to denazify the country. So what happened, like, recently? We have seen a recent development, like, uh, two days ago, like, uh, uh, the Russians captured the Maripol. So it was a greatest victory uh, in the region because the Russian, right now, the Russian target is just the Donbas region because uh, the Donbas region is key strategic for its uh, Western ge geographical security. So the Ukraine is not serious. And who is just uh, prolonging this conflict? We know, like, the Big problem. NATO is just arming Ukraine and neo Nazi battalions in Ukraine. This is the biggest problem within the Russian security circles. So the Russian doesn't want to attack the Ukraine, or like it doesn't want to attack the Kiev, or doesn't want to attack the Ukrainian people. It's uh, attacking the neo Nazi battalion, which are a threat. Supported and armed by the CIA and the Americans, like since 2014. So they got this opportunity and they trained them, armed them, and uh, they have to tried to use them against Russia. So right now we have seen the Istanbul summit. The Istanbul summit have been a little bit successful, but uh, the Ukrainian government is not serious about it. The NATO is, is still supplying the money. They are still imposing the sanction on Russia. And let me tell you, like how you can be serious on such an issue when your partners are not, uh, like your the countering partners, uh, counterparts are not uh, so much serious about this issue. The Americans and the Europeans doesn't seem serious about this issue. They want to prolong this conflict because America is benefiting from it. Because uh, uh, the major purpose of this particular war is uh, like to uh, throw away Europe from the Russian security, from the Russian security circle, uh, sorry, for the Russian uh, energy circle. So it did. Like the America is now uh, trying to uh, leverage the European defense policy and security policy in this particular conflict. The United Nations have discussed the conflict between Russia and Ukraine several times. And on each and every single occasion, the truth spins one way. It's Russia who gets sanctioned and questioned regarding its acts. However, when Moscow presents evidence and talks of the violations that were committed in the Donbass for the past eight years, and when the Russian delegation addresses the bioweapons labs their commands have found on Ukrainian soil, this is dismissed or hardly even taken into account when it comes to making decisions and finding those responsible. What does this one-sided tendency indicate in terms of world politics? This is too much like uh, the United Nations is not an uh, international organization now. It has become the puppet of the American, America and its allies. Uh, we have seen this, like uh, there's uh, too much bigotry like when it comes to the Russia and its uh, security concerns. Like uh, there is a Russophobic uh, 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 campaign launched by the Western media, mainstream media. So the United Nations supports that particular anti-Russian, uh, inter-Russophobic, uh, Russophobic hysteria. And it has tried to press Russia. Uh, like it has supported the United Nations, even supported sanctions imposed by the West without taking into account the real issue, what was going on there. And regarding this bio labs, the, it was available on the United Nations, United States uh, embassy website. Like uh, they were working on this uh, multi-million project, uh, which they have spent on the uh, some biological activities in Ukraine. And Russia knew this from the very beginning. And Russia showed it many times. And even China, China received this issue many times, but Americans didn't care about it. And when this uh, special military operation began, everything came up. Like Russia got the documents of some biological activities, which is uh, strictly prohibited under the United Nations uh, under, under the biological conventions, which America was violating in the foreign soil. And why the uh, is not taking action on this? 
this is strange. Uh, the United Nations has said nothing about the biolabs, though Russia has showed many evidence. The only thing the United Nations focuses on what was going on in Kiev and uh, what Russia was doing there are you getting me like uh, showing some children and the whole Ukrainian sponsored propaganda. That's it. This was the bigotry we have ever seen in the modern history. And this is a, is a serious problem. Like uh, we have to think about the United Nations, the restructuring of the United Nations, because it's not serving the, all the countries. And it's not even recognizing like the countries of global south as the part of the international community. And we have seen this in case of Iraq. We have seen this in case of Afghanistan. We have seen this in case of Libya. And right now, of like uh, Russia, this is uh, too much. We're already aware of the impact the conflict has on the national economies, but also on geopolitics. On the first take, countries that depend on Russian gas are struggling to find alternatives. And on the second instance, since we see countries like Finland and Sweden bidding for a seat in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's ranks, given the rise in tensions in Europe, could this be something favorable to the United States since they have been an essential part in the heightening of the conflict, although watching from the sidelines every development? Yeah, it's obvious. Like, uh, if we, uh, like, see two days ago, Vladimir Putin said, like, you know, the Russian imposed sanctions, or the Western countries imposed sanction on Russia, but the real result were the Western countries, especially the euro, which is highly dependent on for gas and hydrocarbons on Russia. 40% to 50% of the hydrocarbons ex uh, imports are going from Russia, uh, going into Europe from Russia. So uh, Russia, they need Russia. Russia doesn't need them because they are highly dependent on them. Uh, if they want to build the alternative pipelines, like, um, uh, like if they want to import oil or gas from Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or any other alternative for America, like the building of those uh, new pipelines will take around uh, one decade, more than uh, 10 years or 12 years or 15 years. Nobody knows. Like for 15 years, can the Europe survive without hydrocarbons? I don't think so. So they need Russia. They cannot like. Uh, they have realized this. Like you know, the sanctions are not working because uh, initially what happened, the Russian ruble like uh, it slumped, and it uh, reached like one third the lowest in history in recent history. But uh, suddenly it recovered and it recovered to the pre-war level. So now it's really hurting the uh, hurting the Europeans. Like what happened actually? Their strategy, their sanction strategy, their economic sanction strategy, embargo strategy didn't work. So now they have pushed a new strategy, like uh, they have uh, propelled Finland and Sweden like to join like the NATO bloc. I don't think so. Like uh, this is going to many uh, going going to make any sense, because Russia has shared like you know during the heightening of this heightened uh, like as the tensions are heightening in Ukraine, I, I I I don't think so. Like the Finland will take such a bad decision, or the NATO will consider like uh, involving uh, uh, Finland into its orbit. Thank you for joining us, Rahim. We'll follow the events in the region closely. What remains clear, regardless of the interests at stake, is that the longer this fight wages on, the longer it will take for Ukraine to recover from the scars left by the violence. You stay tuned. We'll be right back.